Praise ye the I am. Praise ye the name of the I am. Praise him, all ye servants of the I am. Ye that stand in the house of the I am, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the I am, for the I am is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the I am hath chosen Jacob unto himself, and Israel for his peculiar treasure. For I know that the I am is great, that our God is above all gods. Whatsoever the I am pleased, that he did in heaven and in earth, and in the seas and all the deep places. He causeth vapor to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings for rain. He bringeth the winds out of his treasuries. Who smote the firstborn of Egypt, both man and beast. Who then sent tokens and wonders into the middle midst of thee, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his servants. Who smote great nations and slew mighty kings. Sion, king of the Amorites, and all king of Bashan and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and gave their land for inheritance, inheritance unto Israel, his people. Thy name, O I am, endureth forever. Thy memorial, O I am, throughout all the generations. For the I am will judge his people. He will repent himself concerning his servants. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. They have eyes, have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouth. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. Bless is the I am, O house of Israel. Bless the I am, O house of Aaron. Bless the I am, O house of Levi. Ye that fear the I am, bless the I am. Bless the I am out of Zion, which dwelleth at Jerusalem. Praise ye the I am. Yes, yes, yes. Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have sway over the thoughts of men's hearts. And let them not lead me astray from thee, my God. Establish my seed and me and my seed forever, that we go not astray from henceforth and forevermore. Jubilees chapter 12 and verse 20. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good, good evening. Those of you that are on this platform and shared platforms, you're walking with Mr. Clay. I am Mr. Clay. Yes, yes, a beautiful day, a beautiful day, whether it's afternoon or evening, it's beautiful. Yes, because God has given us enough, another day just to praise his holy name and call out his blessings. Yes, we're in the book of uh, Judges, chapter 5, as you prepare. And also, we want to thank God for those of you that have been with us since the beginning and those of you that have been with us. Here and thereafter and there's about it. We thank God for those of you that have just subscribed. Yes, we thank God for you too. And we thank the Most High for those of you that are about to subscribe. Calling those things that are not as though they are. Yes, all praise us to the Most High. All praise us to His holy name. Yes, yes, yes. We're in the book of Judges. Judges. Yes, Judges. Now, we have it with Deborah. Deborah, Barak, went, see, God did all that by himself. When the kings of Canaan had taken over and uh, because of the sins of the children of Israel. Now, we also know even in our daily lives that when we sin, when we go against his commandment statutes, when you start, worship, you start wondering, you and your churches that call yourself children, Christians, you, you, you and your mosque and all these other things, you wonder why the evil happens to you and it's continually coming at you. You might have maybe just a smith. You, you don't have no peace. It's been going at you for hundreds of years because you're worshiping the wrong God. You're worshiping that which call itself beside God by the testimony of what they say the Pizos dreamt up and said it was Stephen that slipped up into heaven and said, I see Jesus standing next to God. That was the biggest lie ever told. But either way, it was told by a man. Giving characters of their own family. Look up Curie Mayo and the Pizos. And then you, you can, it's a four hour video. If you really want to get into the depth about the Pizos in the New Testament, look up Curie Mayo on YouTube. 
Yes. He goes into detail as to this. I've read it. I've read it and listened to him years and years ago. He really does his due diligence in studying and trying to bring to you some of his studies. Some I don't agree with, but, you know, you never know. Some of the lands that God has given you, taken over. The lands of Israel. All because of what? The first commandment. I don't have to tell you what it is. Or you shouldn't have a God before God. No. You shouldn't make gods. No. Okay. I just gave you the answer. But either way. The fact is, is that the commandments, there stands everything. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. I'm not talking about no Saturday. I'm not talking about no Sunday. I'm talking about the Sabbath. God works by his own creation. He created a clock called the moon and the sun. He said the, the morning, after he created it all, the morning and the evening were the first day. Or the evening and the morning were the first day. It started out of darkness. This is where you get the dark, at the moment you get a darkness. When the month is about to change and then when the moon comes around and begins to shine, you just see the first smidgen of light coming in the night from the moon. That is the new moon. Yes, it is. And this denotes the new month. So happy new month to those of you who understand what I'm saying and those of you who go by the word of the Most High. Happy new month. Because the other months and the other days you were going by are pagan. Not even by, not by even disposition of their gods. But the fact is, is that they made this up. Yes, it's calculated a little bit here and there. Even the, 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 the fake Jews, their calendar is wrong. God goes by the moon. Yes, yeah, some of you go, oh, he says away with your moons and your Sabbath. Does that give you any right to sit up there and... Change the times and the things of God? No, it doesn't. So let us make a call a buck a buck. And our Sabbath, after the new moon, you count seven days. And there is your Sabbath day. Now the feast days, they're not optional, but the fact is many of us are in captivity. Captive lands where the governments have made up their times. The, 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 the heathen and pagan religions have infiltrated the governments and all these other things. They have tried to infiltrate even the things of the Most High. But you, you are charged to keep them. However you can, you have to keep them. And this is how God judges your heart. That you have a heart toward keeping that which He have entrusted and that you have, your ancestors have told you they will do. Upholding the promise of your ancestors is what you're doing. Those of you who know or have a glimpse that you are the children of the Most High. We're not talking about the heathen. If they decide to come, that's good. We're not talking about the Gentiles. If they decide whether they be backslidden or deceived Israelites, they, that's up to them. But for those of you who know and understand and God touched your heart and said, Hey, my commandments, my statutes, my laws, my ordinances, don't forget about them. This is your eternity. They do these same things where God is. The angels stand before God 24-7 giving him worship and glory. That's boring in you because you're so used to earthly things. It is. It's boring to us. We're so used to these earthly things. Our attention is being split. That your eyes go both ways. And that we only see the things of this earth. The television shows. The the degradation of marriages and all these other things. We can't even sit up there and we, we judge other folks and don't even know why they do what they do. Yes, you judge. Who you, well, what am I talking about? I'm talking about polygyny. Not polygamy, not polandry. I'm talking about polygyny. This is thousands of years old. Instituted and God did not have nothing because nothing against it because what? It was something that created a righteous people. Even with Israel, it created a righteous people at first, but we cannot say anything for what the children have done. But yet they fail to teach their children and to follow the thing themselves after following what seems so... Oh, this is why Satan putting so much stuff in your face. I mean the space, the Gen X's, and all this other, 
Oh, these artificial things. If you realize and see what they are, they're artificial. Yes, they seem, oh, they're, they're, so gl they're so glamorous. You look up at them and say, oh, men can do this, oh. But the fact is, is that what? They're artificial. They're not God. The things that they use are from the earth. God can do these things and even more. Look at the handiwork of the stars. Man, all after them. Look at the depths of the ocean. Man, all after them. But yet he can only think, create things that are artificial. And take the things of God and try to manipulate them to, to his. God does. He allows that. Don't you know that? God allows that. He does. He allows man to manipulate different things he created. To come up. For man to come up with his own wicked. Should I say equal or should I? I'm trying to get the right word to it. Some of it. I'll put it that way. Some of it. Or conclusion. I'll put it that way. Yes. Conclusions. But God is, is good. Everything that he made is good. From the depths of the sea all for his, for his glory. For his enjoyment. Even you. Don't you think God gloried in Abram when Abram was tested? God gloried in Job when God was tested? God gloried in Elijah and he gloried in David that he turned around and repented of his sins. Solomon, he looked around and he saw a man that really humbled himself and he gave him what he wanted. But he knew that Solomon was, would, would turn from him. But the fact is he forgave him anyway. And the fact is all the prophets and prophetesses of old. He done these things. Now let's get into this thing here. I can talk and talk and talk and talk. But we're going to just read through it right quick. As far as we can get. Then sang Deborah. We're in Judges chapter 5. Judges chapter 5 and verse 1. Then sang Deborah and Barak the son of Abinoam on the day, on that day saying. The day what? The day that these enemies of theirs, according to Judges chapter 4, were defeated. They obeyed God. She went with him. They obeyed the Most High. And they were delivered from those who oppressed them because of their sin. You say, well, we're oppressed by this white man. We're oppressed by this Arab. We're oppressed by these other tribes and other people that come and they're, they're led by. Why are you oppressed? Did your idol deliver you? From your oppressions? Did your Jesus deliver you or Muhammad? Did he deliver you? No. Your sins oppressed you. Your repentance shall deliver you. This is what I stated. You repent and you ask God to deliver you from your enemies. It's the same thing in all the African continents that are so demised and so raped and pillaged and plundered and oh they look at you and they say hey not only you but all everything of dark nature because you are the sons of Noah regardless whether you're Israel or not everything dark if you don't believe that you are the sons of Noah you're dark you're black they say God have set a difference and God have caused this jealousy to happen because of what? Your sins. And God will deliver you because of your repentance. You get down and you cry to God and you tell him, forgive me. I've created the, and then throw your gods away, bury them somewhere, burn them, whatever you got to do. Get rid of them. And start doing those things that God have commanded Israel to do. And commanded even, not even that, even Noah. The children, they knew the Sabbath day was supposed, not, not only that, all the people knew the Sabbath day. That's a law for all mankind. The Sabbath, not just for Israel. It was a statue for all mankind. Even in the book of Enoch, Jubilees, and all these, the Sabbath. I'm not going to finish this scripture. <laughs> but either way, it was a it was something God had set for everyone. I'm trying not to get ahead of myself because I get tongue-tied. But either way, let me take my time. 
He, she says, praise ye the I am for avenging Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. When the people willingly offered themselves and says, we repent for what we have done. We repent for what we have done. We, we put you last and put things that are inanimate and things that are we put beside you. We have done these things. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. Even I will sing unto the I Am. I will sing praise to the I Am, God of Israel. I Am, when thou wentest out of Seir, which is Edom, my Edom, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped and the clouds also dropped water. She saw these things. And the mountains melted from before the I am, even that Sinai from before the I am, God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jahel, highways were unoccupied. The travelers walked through the byways. The inhabitants of the villages ceased and ceased in Israel until I, that I, Deborah, rose, that I rose in mother in Israel. In other words, during the time that these things were going on, I rose, you, you picked me. You caused me to hear your voice. And from then on, she started hearing the voice by sitting under the tree and judging Israel because of God who showed her his statutes, judgments, and commandments, and laws. They chose new gods. Then there was war in the gates. In other words, she was talking about the idolatry. The idolatry that we do. The idolatry that your children do. You walk in your churches. You dance in a frenzy. You don't even know the spirit behind all of that. It just feels good, don't it? Yes. I've watched the Michael Jackson thing and I've seen all them people falling out and falling everywhere. What is it? That's nothing new. The thing about God is not falling and saying this and poof and all this. This is witchcraft. But the fact is, the thing about God is a righteous life. That which is in accordance with his statutes, laws, and commandments. That's boring to you, isn't it? <clears throat> you cannot even deal with that. It's very boring. To live and not get jealous of your neighbor and covet what he or she has. To live. And not choose other gods and go with your horoscopes, telescopes, or whatever you want to call them. That's something. Ooh, I'm this. I'm a, a Tarius. I'm this. I'm a this and that and that. Uh, you're nothing. This is the work of devils. God put this here to test you. Yes. She says, she says they chose new gods. Why? Because they thought they were better than their gods. Although they'd ever done nothing. They was colorful images. Little trinkets and all these other things. They chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. Because they chose new gods, then there was war in the gates. There was a shield or a spear seen among 40,000 in Israel. My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. In other words, they began to repent. They started saying we it's our fault that this thing happened people have a habit of following their leaders if your leader is righteous and does that which is right before the most high according to his word then the people are going to prosper but if he's evil or she's evil the people are going to experience the things now why is your borders so occupied why are your borders so attacked get rid of the thing that is causing it Number one is Christianity. Even Islam. I just hate to say it, but it is so. Some of you, you have a righteous thought. God blesses that. Yes, you say, okay, you know, we're going to turn to God. We're going to do that which is right. We're going to hear the people. God heard the people. Yes, he did in his time. But the fact is, God is not going to hear you. If I would guard sin in my heart, the first commandment, thou shalt not have any gods before me. Thou shalt not make any graven images of anything in the earth, the sky, the lands, whatever, the sea. You know where that scripture is at. He says, my heart is toward the governors of Israel. That's what she says. And offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the I am. All praises to his name. Speak, ye that ride on white asses. 
In other words, you are in high places. Ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. In other words, judge righteously. Do those things that are right. Not only in the African continent, only the African continent, but also even all throughout the world. Judges using bigotry and racism and systematic racism and all manner of things instead of judging that which the law. And then they began to excuse or accuse each other. Because you look like me or you like you be my child or something, I'm, I'm going to excuse you from your sin or from your transgression against the law of the people. This is what is happening now, even in the U.S. The U.S. cannot speak against anyone because this is happening there. Same thing in Argentina and all South America. Biasness, bigotry, racism. God hates it. And you wonder why you are so plagued with internal and external warring, murders, deceit, debate, everything that goes against the word of God and righteousness. Speak ye that ride on ass. And then verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of, they are delivered. They that are delivered from the noise of the archer in the places of drawing the water, there shall they rehearse the righteous act of the I am, even the righteous act toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. 200 in Burkina Faso demised. God has his eye on you. What were you doing? Are you very innocent? Why are your borders constantly bombarded? Not only that, in Namibia, all the different places, even in the U.S., where your government has allowed those of ill will to come into your country and began to try to infiltrate and get those that are of a darker skin. They put them in your neighborhoods and tell them to infiltrate them. Some of you have repelled them. God has blessed you that way. Why don't you give praise and thanks to God? You didn't do it. God allowed that to happen. Some of you cowered down and went to your own transgressions and did those things were against righteousness, against God's laws and commandments. He says now, in verse 11, there they shall rehearse the righteous acts of the I Am, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the I Am go down to the gates. In other words, you're going to go down to the gates, the doors, the interests of your cities and all that and keep all this stuff out. Awake, awake, Deborah, Deborah. Awake, awake, utterly, utter a song. Arise, Barak, and leave thy captivity cabin, thou son of Abinoam. Then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles of the people. And the I am made me have dominion over the mighty. In other words, because I have a righteous thing to say and God is with me. It's right what I'm saying. Do this. This is why God is with me because I'm saying what is right. Out of Ephraim, there was a root of them against Amalek. After thee, Benjamin, among thy people, out of Mekar came down governors, out of Zebulun, they that handled the pen of the writer. Uh -huh. These are scribes. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah. In other words, they looked at this prophetess and they said, even Issachar and also Barak. She didn't, remember, she didn't forget to mention that. And he was sent on foot into the valley for the division of Reuben, and there were great thoughts of heart. They had to think about it. Why abodest thou among the sheepfolds to hear the bleedings of the flock? For the divisions of Reuben there were great searching of the heart. In other words, the repentance that should come. Saying, oh God, deliver us, deliver us, forgive us for our sins. Deliver us from these enemies. Show us what to do. How shall we go forth and defeat our enemies? Deliver them into our hands. This is what we're saying. The intention of the enemy has really arisen in the cities of the U.S. to rival what they call the global majority that the minority of the global majority that's in the small, in the hoods, in the different apartment complexes. Yes, this is what they're saying. The kings came and fought 
then fought the kings of Canaan in Anak by the waters of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. In other words, they came because it was in their hearts by what God allowed these evil spirits. As I often say, evil is that which comes at you. Evil is whatever you think contrary to your intentions. That's evil. Beware of the meanings of words. Your, your intentions could be evil, but it's evil that good comes toward your, inten your evil intentions because it comes to avenge. See, evil can be anything. It's just a matter. It's whatever's contrary to you or your intentions or that group or that people. Now, then were the horse hoofs broken by the means of prancings, the prancings of their mighty ones. Yeah, they were prancing. Yeah, we're going to get them. Curse ye, Meroz, said the angel of the I Am. And the angel, the messenger of the I Am came. Angel, messenger, messenger, angel. Okay. Curse ye bitterly, the inhabitants. So God sent the messenger to send them word from him saying, Cursed. And he says, because they came not to help the I am, to help the help of the I, because they came not to the help of the I am, to help, yeah, I, excuse me, the I am against the mighty. Blessed above women shall Jehiel, the wife Eber, the Kenite, be blessed. She be above women in the tent. He asked her water, and she gave him milk. She brought forth butter in a lordly dish. She put her hand to the nail, her right hand to the workman's hammer, and with the hammer she smote Sesera. She smote off his head when she had pierced the stricken through his temples. Yes. Why do you think, I'm going to use this allegedly, why do you think they allow this influx of non-documented immigrants? It's not the good ones. But they, 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 they wanted to get the ones that's going to cause this havoc. This was the whole intention after all. Commander in chief told the Black Caucus what he was doing, and he'd only mention, "Oh, you, 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 black and Hispanics going to have you blacks going to have to get along with the Hispanics." He was telling his whole intention right there, and now he put. The, the degradation, the lowest of the lowest of those Hispanics out of the countries in South America. I'm not talking about the other ones. The ones that's causing the havoc. To disrupt the neighborhoods. To make them infiltrate and drive out and make them seem, put them, raise them up higher than the ones that they hate so bad. This is hate. Don't you know this is hate? They are letting them in off the borders because without any paperwork or any background checks or anything that has to do with legality. And then before that, they even took the ones that were of dark skin and they sent them back. They even played for the plane ride. They used whips and what? This is the hate. They hate you. These government officials hate you. Now they come and trying to push you out of your neighborhoods and this is not just, this is not just, this is hate. This is hate. This is hate. Why? Because you will not turn to the most high. And because some of you are so engulfed in this slave Bible and all this stuff that you forget that if I repent, I can repel. <laughs> come on, young. Don't forget. Whatever you have to do, you just got to do it. Period. Yes, you just got to do it. Yes, you do. Now, she put her hand to the nail. Let's go to verse 28, and then we're going to stop here. And the mother of Cesare took out a window and cried through the lattice, Why is his chariot so long coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariot? Her wise ladies answered her, Yay, she returned answer to herself. You know, she's saying it's done. I did it. We, we got rid of this joker. And then here you go and you read the rest of the cha chapter 4. You're going to find out that Barak took 
chariots of men, and he began to subdue them. It's just like pushing over domino. Poop, poop, poop. Because they feared. Once you strike that which motivates an enemy, you've won. Once you strike that which motivates an enemy, you won. It's just a matter of just sweeping them out the way. And with that, we're going to say, Peace. Walk with me.